I just had a dream or a realization in a dream that humans on earth, all of us, are suffering a morale penalty right now. And I think it's because of overpopulation. And what that means is not necessarily there are too many people, but that the number of people are configured improperly. So we're suffering a negative 15 to our morale. Imagine that we had a, a, a scale of morale that gave us bonuses to our behavior. The higher your morale, the faster you work, the clearer you think, the better decisions you make, the happier you are, the nicer you are to people, the easier it is to get along, all these things because of a good morale. So that's how it functions in military. It's how it functions throughout the board. And we're getting out of 100, negative 15%. Everyone, every child, every man, every woman, without realizing it. A lot of people are just, they just have a, a negative to their own. So we're, we're, we're less likely to make these good decisions. We're more likely to make stupider decisions. And it's it's showing. And it's, and it's making it difficult to change and transition. Like, that's why there's this stagnancy in technology revolution. Because people are like... There's, they don't know if it's even possible. It's like they're questioning what, what's the point if there's 8 billion of us and, and we're choking the world out but with these cities. So what's happening is we're, we're all stuck in these cities. You know, I went to New York in 2001 because I thought I wanted to be an actor. Uh, the only time, place to be an actor in 2000 was New York City, Chicago, Los Angeles in the United States, more or less, to make a living. Um, even in Chicago is difficult. There was theater, but like if you want to be on TV or be SAG, which is the, the uh, Screen Actors Guild, the union for television and movies, one of the movie, one of the unions um, next to AFTRA, you, you had to go to the city. You had to go to SAG. Or you had to go to New York or LA, and um, to get an agent. You know that's where all the, pretty much most of the agents lived, and it's where you know Warner Brothers is. CBS, they're all like, that's where their studios are. And that's where they shoot the movies is in these cities. So I went and it was smelled bad. And it was, people were stacked on top of each other. There was a lot of crime and people were angry. And at night I was afraid to walk around because it was dark and it was dangerous. And I was rightfully so afraid to walk around. So I think not that there's a one way to fix it, but there's usually when there's a problem, there's multiple solutions. And I think one of the solutions is to spread out human society and to make micro grids that like little cities all over the country, all over the world that are connected by high speed railway, uh, either through in tunnels um, or, and to put our traffic underground in tunnels so that we can walk around uh, without looking both ways and, and we don't have to smell the pollution or to, to, you know, make electric cars that give off high oxygen as a byproduct instead of carbon monoxide um, that have vertical farms on every city block so the food is grown locally and doesn't have to be transported in and may not get shut off and our electricity is also harvested locally with solar power geothermal power or a multitude of other forms of power these technologies are possible and probable so i think instituting something like that would ease the pain of overpopulation burden and if you've played games too like Stellaris or any of these four time four by games like Civilization, Endless Legend, morale's a, especially in Stellaris, planetary over overpopulation is a is a huge morale plunder. Um Rimworld, if you haven't played Rimworld psychology, it's about these colonists that live on a planet and they live in a little colony that they're building and you you like control them and well you don't really control them, you give them orders and then they kind of do their own thing. I mean, you say, like, I want you to be prioritize doctoring and you to prioritize cutting down trees and you to prioritize cooking and you to prioritize mining and you to prioritize socializing. And then they all go off and they do their thing. They all have like stats like this guy's crazy, but this guy's really nice. And this guy's a great he likes to be underground and this guy likes to sleep during the day. And then they all go off and work. And if if they get unhappy, like if their room's dark or shitty, if they've seen blood, if somebody gets blown up that they know, like their morale just like. And if their morale goes down, they go fucking ape shit. They might break. They might snap. They might start beating the shit out of somebody. They might start working slower. Like, they definitely start. And it's such an integral part of what we are. And it's almost intangible and challenging to describe what is morale. But it's so important. Another way to solve the, the population crisis is to take people off of the planet 
and move them to Mars. Like if we move half of the, but even then, I think this whole city thing is becoming obsolete. Highly dangerous, these cities where people are just jammed together. I mean, if you've seen a building where there's a fire and people run towards the exit and get stuck, it's like, no one wants to live like that. I mean, no one should have to live like that. It's not like it's like a um, snap of fingers and it happens. I know that. But if we see the goal, it's easier to get there. And I'm fascinated with microgrids, where you share electricity, like your little area of 60,000 people or whatever. It's growing its own food. You have your unique foods that you're making and communicating with your community. And then you got your own electricity that you're selling to your neighbors. Your other, the other microgrids, like 16 miles away um, with free transport. And I like the idea of putting all the traffic underground because, well, maybe not all the traffic, but all the city traffic because cars don't go everywhere anyway. They can't drive like diagonally and like through buildings and like over the grass. Like we're on these grids anyway. So why not just, it's relatively easy to build gridded tunnels, do it like that. And you don't, you know, there's no cross walks in a, there's no crossways, like no intersections and tunnels because you put this road here and this road here. And so if you wanted to merge, you know, down to this road, you could have on ramps and stuff, but you don't have to stop. Traffic would never have to stop as it passed by itself. It would be way more efficient, faster. The downside would be you'd be underground while you're in a car, but ideally the car would be self-driving or like on a rail magnetic rail or something and you just be able to fucking watch TV or play video games while you're down there anyway or sleep and you could VR out the underground I mean you could make it super cool change the system not the people people are people that's this whole culture war thing where people are trying to you know, Black Lives Matter, I, I love people and revolutions and psychology, I, but there comes a point where we've already had the mental revolution. Now it's time for a technological revolution, a materials revolution with graphene or like dual photonic 3D printing where you, you ablate, you know, a substrate with lasers and 3D print it out of a, out of a resin and make like spaceships. In fact, I'll put a link to some breakthrough technology that Andreas just sent me. We're, we're on the cusp and we're ready for it. 